For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. By the way, that's not water baptism. That's Romans 6, a spiritual baptism. The Spirit of God, the moment you trust Christ as your Savior, He puts you into the body of Christ. Where's my uh, Here we go. Now, the body of Christ, when you get saved, when you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, you get saved, you trust His shed blood there. The Spirit of God takes you, whoever you are, male or female, bond or free, and, and, and just see this, this, this is the body of Christ, corporately, the body of Christ. The moment you do that, the Spirit of God takes you and places you into Christ. That happens the moment you're, that's why you can never lose your salvation. You're in Christ, okay? Positional. You're saved forever. Remember what I was saying, no religion can ever give you that assurance. I talk with Muslims, Catholics, Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, you name it. I might even go down to the Neptune Society right there on Madison <laughs> and talk to them, but I ain't gonna waste my time. They don't Anyway, but can I tell you something? God says that the moment you trust Christ, that's not a water ceremony. That's by the Spirit of God. That's something spiritual, okay? Go over to um, Ephesians chapter number 4. I better put this out there. Because the Bible makes it clear, this dispensation, there's only one baptism. That's right. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 4. Paul says, there is one body. There's, there's a, a heretical doctrine out there that there's two separate bodies. That there is an Acts body, uh, 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 some of Paul's epistles written during the book of Acts, his early epistles, that's one body. And then there's a separate body uh, from, from, from Ephesians on. No, Paul says there is one body. He wrote 1 Corinthians early, he wrote Ephesians late. He, in both of them he says, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. There's only one body of Christ. By the way, and one spirit, Holy Spirit, that's the capital spirit, one spirit. It's by that spirit are we, when we trust Christ, when we trust Christ, that we're baptized into one body. The spirit of God does that, okay? It's God, the Holy Spirit does that. No man, only God can put you into Christ. Why is that important? Keep reading. Ephesians 4, verse 4. Even as you are called, now notice, even. We use that. Specifically, you're called in one hope of your calling. What is that? That's for the heavenly places. That one hope of our calling is to rule and reign in the heavenly places. Remember, no one looked to go to heaven before Paul came on. Okay? One Lord. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. One faith. That's Paul's doctrine, the mystery of Christ. <coughs> How many baptisms in verse 5? One. One baptism. Now, Paul has to tell us there's one baptism. That means people are saying that there's more than one for today. And it's not water. He says, for by one spirit are we all baptized. The, the baptism for today is by the Holy Spirit. When people add water, you're making it more than one. Therefore, you're breaking the word of God. You're that, making a washing. Yes. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 5 says there's one baptism. Okay. Now, baptism, most people think water. But I can tell you that there are multiple baptisms in Scripture. Baptism, if you want a good definition from the Bible of a baptism, it means total identification. Total, it has to do with identification. Who do you identify with? So you have an identification in Christ. The Spirit of God placed you in there. You're totally, so the word baptism is totally identified. And even the water baptism that John did, go over to, go to Matthew chapter 3. Go over to the Gospel of Matthew, the Jewish Gospel of Matthew chapter 3. I like to show people this because the average person, when they think baptism or baptize, they always think water. But that's not, that's not how the Bible presents it. Water is one of the baptisms, but there are many baptisms. Immersion is not not necessarily liquid, right? Right. Right. And, and they, they would sprinkle. He says, then shall I sprinkle you with clean water, you be clean, and so forth. And the point is, whether it was immersion or sprinkling, the water was the issue because of what it represents, the washing, right? But what the water represented in type and shadow, we got through the truth of the blood of Christ. That water just represents cleansing for the nation. It also anointed them as priests, Exodus 29. The two ordinances of a priest, and Israel is going to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation on this earth. And a priest needed to be washed with water. That was the water baptism of John. 
That's why the Lord Jesus Christ, he was baptized. He didn't have any sins to be cleansed of. When he said, John says, what are, what are we doing here? You need to be baptized with me. The Lord says, no, let's do this, John, to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus Christ is the high priest of Israel, so he needed to be water baptized. That's why John water baptized him. And then the Spirit of God came down, right, like a dove, and it anointed him for service. That's the anointing with oil. And in Exodus 29, the priest of Israel needed to be water baptized and anointed with oil, type of water and the Spirit. Let me show you John saying that. Look at, look at Matthew 3.11. Matthew 3, 11, John speaking to the nation of Israel. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with what? Water. water. Israel had a water baptism unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who would that be? Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah. Whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He, that's the Messiah, the Lord Jesus, shall baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with fire. You have three separate baptisms in one verse. That's why, that's why I use this verse. Because I want people to say, see that in this one verse, you have three separate baptisms. Let's go erase that for a moment. Matthew 3.11, you have what? Water. John's going to do that. That's by John. You have the Holy Ghost baptism. The Lord Jesus Christ does that one. And then you have the baptism. By the way, I, I came out of a Pentecostal type background where it was like, well, we need a baptism of fire. No, you don't. You know what that fire represents? The wrath of God, man. Yeah, you do need that. That's wrath. Jack, that's, that's why in Pentecost, when the, Holy Ghost, when, the, when the Holy Ghost came on the Lord Jesus for his ministry, he came as a dove. What does a dove represent in Scripture? Peace. He's preaching peace. But when he came down on the 12 apostles in Acts 2, it came as tongues of what? Fire. fire. Tongues of fire. They were they using their tongues to put the wrath on the nation of Israel, get them to repent of killing their Messiah. That's the wrath of God. That's future. That's the, the day of the Lord, that seven-year period. That if you're not saved today, you're going to be a part of in the future. We're going to get raptured out of here, and then the world is going to experience that. You don't want to be part of that. And if you're not sure that whether you're going to be a part of that or not, wait till the end. Just... We're going to give you some good, good news and hope. So that's three different baptisms in one verse. Water, Holy Ghost, fire. The one Paul tells us about is one of the Spirit. The Spirit is the one who baptizes us into one body, okay? So I want to get that clear. There's only one baptism for the body of Christ. Don't add water to it because you're breaking God's command.